Hello, and welcome to episode 138 of The Nerd Out. I'm Lisa. I'm Rachel P. We're girls and we nerd out. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Email us, info at thenerdout.com. Check our website. We have show notes. We have pretty pictures. And we are also a part of the Word to Your Mama Network, which is at WTY Mama on all of the socials. That is correct. That yep. is correct. All the good stuff. All the good stuff. Um, I wanted to start off this episode with an apology to those that follow us on the Twitters for for the nerd out. Not word to your mama, but the nerd out Twitters, uh, because we were, you know, in transition, we did not check it. I didn't have the logins and uh, recently checked. So I wanted to give a shout out to those that, you know, interacted with us. And it was crickets. Apologies. Um, This was from April 7th. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. April 7th. It's from uh, Salty Salty Ham. It says, I have missed the nerd out so bad, and I have so many things I want to signal boost or just shout, yes. <laughs> so That's that was awesome. very kind. Thank you so much. I replied and I said, uh, I, I said, gracias, three months in a row now. We have done it. You can now listen on Word to Your Mom as well. And then they also uh, responded saying, got to admit, you have me thinking some kind of new way about NFTs and the metaverse. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. We, we got are game reach. changers. We are game changers Disruptors, right here. Disruptors, if you will. Disruptors for sure. So thank <laughs> you so much, uh, Salty Salty Ham. Not, salt, not to be confused. <laughs> with, with Salty Ham. But Salty yes. Salty. salty. But salty, salty. Thank you so much for interacting. We're back on there now. And uh, yeah, so don't forget to hit us up. So I put a call out saying that we were going to record today and uh, asking what people are currently nerding out on. Um, We got a bunch of people saying Stranger Things. Yep. Right? Because uh, 4.2. Season yep. four point two is out, which is we'll talk about it, and 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 then um have oh, um Lucia Diaz, she's an amazing Latina Colombian uh, illustrator that actually I'm gonna have on Word to Your Mama soon, and she says she's currently nerding out on Procreate brushes. That's her current oh. fa- yeah nerd out. So that'll Looking be great. That so up right now. So when I talk to her, I'll ask her which ones are her favorite. Um. Because it would also help the supernatural bear. He's heavy on procreate um, with his stuff, with can this thing I, called digi bashes. That's the latest for the kids. Uh, can I just say that I was really excited because I was like, oh, "Ooh, I need some new makeup brushes." And then I linked on this, and I was like, "Oh, they're painting brushes." And then I clicked on it, and I was like, "No, it's I'm just totally lost. I have no idea." <laughs> there, so there's a, a app that you can get for your iPad. It's called Procreate. Uh-huh. Right. So uh-huh. it's like a, think of it as like a mix of Illustrator and Photoshop, but you cool. can do with the pen. Right. It, oh, with fun. the stylus okay. you do okay. with your stylus. So she's talking about the different brushes because you set the the, you know, the you the settings, the preferences for the different types of brushes. Then you could do, oh, you want like a, cray, you know, a crayon effect, a brush stroke effect. So there's a bunch of different brushes. People they come standard with the program and also people create new brushes. And then you can download them, buy them, add them to your thing. And uh, yeah, Procreate Brushes. So I'm excited to see and hear more about that. Uh, so first and foremost, T.I., how are we doing? It's been a month. We do, we're a- here again. <laughs> it's been a month can mean so many things. <laughs> it's been a month. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's been a month. I mean... Under his eye. Uh, I, you know, coming, I wonder, gosh, does this mean that our, are there any changes to our podcast because we are less human than we were a couple weeks ago? Like, how does that carry over into the content that we're creating? I wonder if that also has less rights. Yeah. It's fucked up, man. It's pretty fucked up. Yeah. 
Um, may I just say, if other people out there are like me, filled with uh, rage and frustration, may I, I recommend taking it out on um, donating if you are financially able to do so to a good organization and mm -hmm. getting involved in um, voter registration, voter turnout. There are more people who believe in this stuff than there are people who aren't. The problem is the aren'ts vote more. So exactly. if we can just get, I am sure if you are listening to this, that you vote. And if you listen to this and you do not vote, I would like you to please hit pause, go to <laughs> register to vote in wherever you live and get the fuck registered. Yeah. And um, fight, make some changes, do some shit. That's the only way. Protests are good and, and appreciate it. Appreciate it. But the real, the only thing that's going to change things right now, the only thing we can do that's really going to, that can really make some drastic change is to vote these motherfuckers out. Yes. That's it. And you can't, and we can't just do it once and then be like, look at what we did. Pat on no. the back. No. It's got to be every election, big and small, all of them. Even, yes. Like you can see why local and state elections are so important right now. Now we could see. Now we could see that. We see the mm -hmm. importance. Know who your local officials are. Get to know them. Figure out usually local officials too. There's like an email, a Twitter account, something. Get to know them. See what they're about. You know, reelect them or vote them the fuck out. Yep. Yeah. So uh I, I would love to hear, actually, if any of our listeners have, like, interesting, new, creative ways to, like, volunteer, be active, um, anything that you are doing. Yeah. Let us know. Let, like, yeah. I shared with you, let's see, the TikTok from the woman who um, was calling up her local representative to let him know what was the latest with her period <laughs> and her uterus and how things were going and had a very like straight faced conversation with the person in his office. Like I'm now I'm going to be going out of town soon. Does my representative want like how does my representative want to handle my uterus? And they're like, um. <laughs> Um, if all of us did this all the time, every fucking day, these people would get tired the fuck out. Yeah, like not worth it. <laughs> yeah. So come on. Intellectual terrorism. Intellectual. I love that word. Intellectual terrorism. I'm for it. I'm for it. Yeah, me too. I'm me for too. it. It's, it has been a month of uh, some fucked upness. It feels like we time traveled. The wrong way in the wrong direction yeah um we did and then you know today is july 5th uh it's been a fucked up week it's been a fucked up couple of days uh yeah. raise your hand if you felt a little weird celebrating quote unquote fourth of july yeah no and then the shootings the fucking killings yeah. and the the um you know apprehended without incident of fucking course a fucking yeah. course what a surprise what a surprise I, I tweeted i was like i feel you know i'm heartbroken and and you know it goes out to those that have died and those that were shot and i hope we don't get desensitized by this shit but also i want those in quote-unquote power to do fucking say, go into action and do something because i'm tired of this shit and also Oh, white male. We all know the the fucking um the narrative we're about to get hit with. Uh -huh. Of course. Uh -huh. Apprehended without incident. Uh -huh. Of course. Um yeah, mental mentally unwell. Mentally unwell. Of course. A fucking course. Uh -huh. Um, it's the same fucking shit. And we're tired of it, dude. Like we're super tired of it. So that's it. Voting. Voting. Get out there voting, donating to your local, um, you know, clinics. There's also there's a, a great thing that uh, Karen Hernandez, who's been on the uh, word to your mama, who's also part of the postcard biatches and is really um, into the local activism scene in so many different ways. She sent us a great link 
that I forgot the name of the 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 people that put it together, but it's excuse me, you know, it's how to help during this time, and it's donate to your local um, clinics. Also, if you can donate to those that are helping people travel out of state. You can help by uh, providing um, a place for them to stay when they're coming into your state to get services. A lot of different things like that um, that we can do on the, you know, on the ground floor to, to, yes. to help. And I would also, for our listeners who are in quote unquote blue states, and I'm guessing that's probably most of you, <laughs> um, uh, what you can also do, what I am doing, um, and a friend of mine gave me this idea, although it's, it's not like, oh, oh, whoa, lightning bolt, what a fresh idea. Um, it's just a good, it's not a new idea, it's just a good one. <laughs> and that is to pick a purpley state mm-hmm. and focus your energy as well there. Partner up with like your local shit and then find a state that is trying to get people registered, especially people of color yep. um, and women, get them registered, get them like make sure that they are able to have access to vote and um, do what you can to help pick a swing state. If it's Georgia, Arizona, um, Michigan, Wisconsin, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, uh, Pennsylvania, <laughs> any of those do it. Yeah, do it. This is all hands on deck time, kids. Yeah, all hands on deck. So whatever. So if you have, let, let us know. Like she said, what are you doing? Um, because you know, one thing we we uh, are nerding out about now, but always nerd out about rights. <laughs> yeah, rights, rights, fucking rights. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah. yeah, let's let's nerd out. Let's continue to nerd out. And like she said, it's not a one time thing. Like your therapy sessions, it's a fucking practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your therapy, your yoga, your mindfulness, your dieting, your whatever else you're doing it is it's a, practice. a practice. It's not once. It's not once. It's on fucking going, kids. Um, so yeah. And, you know, I think it's a great way, too, for those that are in our lives that are younger, that are... your cat is too cute. There's a cat in the background that I'm pointing <laughs> out. He was attacking an exercise roller. Sorry, please continue. Please continue. You know, maybe his quad. Maybe he was trying to fix, yeah, you know. just trying to work out some kinks. <laughs> but if you have younger um, folks, younger humans in your life that aren't um, of voting age, Get them to, um, you know, volunteer, write post, help you write the postcards, help you make phone calls. I mean, this is a lot uh, another other ways that we could all be involved. And, and mm-hmm. it, it doesn't have to be, well, I, I'm not old enough to vote or I'm not allowed to vote. Well, you're allowed to to contribute and help out with yeah. um, the fight because that's what yeah. it is. It's a it's war right now. And it's a fight. Yeah. <sighs> Get motivated, people. And if that didn't work, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. If that didn't work, just vote every time. You don't, don't even, if, if all you can do is vote, just vote. Yeah. Yeah. It's not, it's not enough, but just vote. (laughs) Better than nothing. Don't be one of those non-voting motherfuckers. Fuck them. Exactly. This isn't the time. This is, and you see what was happening. This isn't the time. Um, Okay, so events and thanks. I just wanted to, along the lines of what Salty Salty Ham was talking about, an announcement. Uh, we had uh, Olamete Verso happen in LA in this past April. It was the first event. Now we are taking it on the road in Bogota, um, Colombia. Oh. And it's Olamete Verso Bogota. And so, yeah, that's going down August 26th through the 27th. So three days. Um, right now we'll have a link. There's a, you know, early bird special. Uh, I am excited that I will be flying there, being there for a week to you set will up. Be amazing. I was just going to ask. Yes. And um, so three days. Don't miss out uh, on this first mixed reality event in Colombia, bringing together and showcasing Latinx creators from all artistic backgrounds. Um, and make sure, you know, you come through. We're also going to be... Uh, live streaming it like we did the LA one. Uh, so yeah, come and join us for an immersive experience about Web3, the metaverse, blockchains, crypto, NFTs, DeFi, DAOs, and FinTech and more. 
Um, yeah. So if anyone's coming or can come, wants to come, let me know. Hit me up on any social slide in the DMs for some discount codes. Uh, let's meet up. And there will have definitely follow Hola Metaverso at Hola Metaverso on Twitter. We definitely will have ongoing Twitter spaces. Um, to talk about, to talk to, you know, when we announce speakers and, and stuff like that. So come through. I have also heard really great things about Bogota. Me too. Me too. Um, so I'm super excited. I'm a, I, I will keep it 100. I'm a little bit, um, a little anxious because it'll be my first time flying since pre pandemic. We're still in a pandemic. Please believe I'll be wearing a mask. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, and then like pre-pandemic, the last time I flew, that's when I found out that I have anxiety all of a sudden because of the surgery <laughs> of, you know, because of the autoimmune disease shit. And so I was like, well, but here I am. It's a great opportunity. And uh, since you since some I don't think the listeners here, but since some other motherfuckers weren't, you know, giving a shit about the pandemic, we're here now, kids. <laughs> We yeah. we got to live our lives now, but I, as safe <laughs> as possible. But I'm here now, so I'll be wearing a mask. That's all I could do. Yeah, I flew recently, and um, at least in the particular areas I was flying, I was like one of the only people wearing a mask. Um, I will say though, once you're like up and up and going in a in a plane fairly safe although not a lot of air circulation when you're like on the ground and taxiing and shit like that so yeah and if some motherfucker next to you is like heavy breathing and sick then forget about it you're totally going down yeah yeah i don't want a cold cold anyways like you know what I'm saying? No, like i don't, I don't want, want anything i don't want anything so no that's i will i have not been sick in years it's been great you know when i've been sick when i get the vaccine Oh, yeah. Irony. So the irony. So I got my booster in January, got fit, got sick only for a day. But and then I have I'm getting my second booster because I'll be traveling. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm getting it on Friday and I book them on yeah. Friday. So I have the weekend to recover and then I keep it moving because I I am, you know, slightly uh, immunocompromised. And I got to, you know, make sure that I, I cover myself. And that's when I get sick. <laughs> yeah. But it's for a good cause. <laughs> it's for a good cause. It's for a good cause. And it's manageable. It's a day. It's a day. I, You know, yeah. you feel like fucking shit, but for a day. And yeah. then I think, I always think while I'm there suffering, I'm like, what, what would have been if I would have caught it yeah, and I didn't have exactly. shit? So there it is. Lots worse. A lot worse. So there we go. Okay, let's get into TV. Yeah, come on. Let's talk some TV. There's a lot of TV going on. Okay. What what are we what are, what are you nerding out about? What's the TVs right now for you? Um, the only thing I'm really there's only two things that I'm really nerding out about. Um, I'm gonna save those. Uh, the first two things that I have been watching is I'm trying to finish up Grace and Frankie. I was traveling, <laughs> like Grace and Frankie episodes, especially if you have anxiety while you're flying, is like such a great distraction because <laughs> they're like fine on your eye on your phone. Like there's a lot of there's most shit I don't want to watch on my phone, but they're like fine on your phone and they're bite-sized and they're uppers and it's funny so highly recommend that i'm trying to zip my way through that one one thing that we have started watching i feel like this should be a nerd out thing but it's not resonating for me it's not hidden quite like that as the kids say would be star trek new worlds uh. it's the new the newest the latest star trek tv show um, people told me that it like, oh, it's the most like the original. I fucking hated the original so much as a kid. Oh my <laughs> God. Like on Saturday and Sunday when you were watching cartoons and then all of a sudden it was all space, the final frontier. I was like, oh, I guess I'll go outside and play. Um, so that was a drag. Never liked it. Have never liked any other Star Trek stuff. Tried to watch the new stuff. Um, the movies I have enjoyed somewhat. Um, but tried to watch the new ones, the one with the girl from The Walking Dead, um, Picard, all of that. They were not working in this ah. household. And strangely enough, Ranger Ted is a huge Star Trek fan, loves the original so much. And so um, he was in a really bad mood and I heard about Star Trek New Worlds. So I was like, why don't we why don't we get Paramount Plus and put this on? So we did and we have watched it. And I would say that I find it enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's like... It's like a cup of tea. Oh. <laughs> you're not like, fuck yeah, I'll have another one of these. But you're like, this is a nice way to pass some time. Ah, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> and um, I do think that, like... It does a really good job of being very matter of fact about um, like, I think that there is there's it's like on one hand, you have like no representation, which is the worst thing. And then on the other hand, you have like kind of like awkward, self-conscious representation of (laughs) like certain groups. And you're like, oh, you're killing me. COVID-19 moves fast, and now you can too. If you feel symptoms, even if they're mild, you should test fast. Test positive and at high risk for severe COVID-19? Then act fast with authorized oral treatments that can be taken at home and must be taken within five days from when symptoms begin. COVID-19 moves fast, and now you can too by asking your healthcare provider if an oral treatment is right for you. Learn about a treatment option at TreatCV19.com. This message is sponsored by Pfizer. Um, this like this is like threads that needle so nicely. It's very matter of fact about people of um, a variety of sexualities, a variety of pe- like it's all very matter of fact, like color, whatever. No difference. Mm. Nobody's treated any differently. It's not like, oh, here's our very special episode about this person who's like this. It's all very matter of fact, which I really like and find very refreshing. Oh, nice. Yeah, well, there is, and I also like that it's probably like sneaking into some middle America households. So ah. keep it up, keep, keep it up, Star Trek worlds. <laughs> uh, but then the two things that I'm nerding out on are Severance. Have you seen Severance? No, it's on my list. Tell okay. me more. So you're still? Are you I'm done? done? I'm done. And was the finale the best thing you've seen in a long time? It was pretty fucking good. Like, mm, 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 we mm. watched the first two episodes and Ranger Ted and true Ranger Ted style was like, nah, I'm over it. And I was like, I know it seems really slow, but I was like, you know, what? there's only like six episodes and I'm a third of the way in. So I might as well keep going. So I just kept going. And like the first two episodes are a little leisurely. It's a little like kind of borderline, like not something that I like and find kind of annoying. Um, like a little twee, a little like uh, style over substance. Uh. But but then like I probably by the third one, I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> and then it's like a fucking downhill out of control locomotive all the way to the very end. And you're like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> and you like have to keep watching. It's great. Oh, I can't wait. Two thumbs up. Two That's thumbs on up. my list. That's on um, HBO Apple. or Apple. Yeah, because yeah. I want to get apples because I want to see that. And I want to see the uh, Maya Rudolph show. Yes, Loot. Yes, I want to see that. I have not seen that. Um, and then someone else was telling someone whose opinion I usually trust was raving about that one with Reese Witherspoon and Jennifer Aniston that I totally dismissed because it just doesn't sound like my thing. Oh, the Sunday morning morning sh- morning show morning show morning show maybe? I, I i loved it i i liked really? it really yeah oh, okay someone else was telling me like oh it's it, like didn't like it so much when it started but it just got stronger and stronger yeah so, it did get stronger and stronger okay. and i think it also depends like you don't have anything else to watch so you're like ah this is better than most let me do that you know like yeah, that type yeah. of shit and also it's kind of crazy to watch it i think i discussed it here a little bit i'll just touch upon it real quick because it's they're they don't know about the pandemic and then they're like in the beginning of it and so you're just like yeah i remember those days you know what i'm saying <laughs> because then they're like they're like oh it's happening in china da, da, da. like you know and then it hits them and you're just like oh yeah i remember that shit it seems like yesterday uh, but it seems like 10 years ago do you know what i'm saying yeah yeah uh-huh because i kind of hate when people especially year two last year when shows were pandemic i was like i don't want to watch this shit i'm in the pandemic yeah. like yeah. i want to watch something far removed i want to take me away so when this one i was like oh this is okay for me because it's a year or two far removed you know what i'm saying you're like yeah oh yeah. i remember those times okay okay <laughs> so yeah see it you know check it out next time you have a, a lull in your schedule and in and, schedule. See, <laughs> and see yeah. how that goes okay well highly recommend severance um, mm-hmm. If you don't have Apple TV and you want my username and password, let me know. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Sharing um, is caring. 
Sharing is caring. <laughs> and then what I think will be a bridge to some of the things that you are also into is Stranger Things. Yes. Okay. So before we get into Stranger Things, have you watched The Bear yet? No, but it's on my list. Fucking shit, man. This show. Okay, so <laughs> so you is guys want Hulu? Hulu? It's on it's on it's on FX and it, all episodes are on Hulu. Okay. Highly recommend, dude. You're gonna love I think you're gonna love the show. I fucking love this show. So um Ginger Snappers, Jane Jessup. Uh, uh-huh. Jane, 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 <laughs> Jane, Jane Jessup. Jessup, or JJ, as I often call him, Mur- Muralist Extraordinaire, aka Ginger Snappers. Uh, I was like, oh, you know, I, there was a couple of shows because of what's happening in the world that we have to fight against. I was like, I don't really want to watch a show that stresses me out right now. I need something different. So yes. I asked that I asked the You Heard Show crew, and he recommended The Bear. He's like, it's kind of intense. Da, 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 da. But, you know, I think, you know, good. And I was like, mm, I go, well, who's in that? And he sent me the cover. I was like, oh, yeah, Lip from Shameless. Uh, Jeremy Allen White, amazing. So I was like, okay. I was like, mm, maybe. And then um, my rib, you know, one of my best friends, she's like, oh, I watched The Bear. It's good. I was like, okay, two people. So then I started watching. Dude, amazing. The music is on point. It is written, directed, uh, produced by... Uh, Christopher Storr, who directed Hassan Minaj's um, uh, Homecoming King, Bo Berman's stuff, um, uh, uh, Carmichael, what's his name? I don't know. The comedian, Gerard Carmichael's special, and he uh, executive produced Eighth Grade with Bo Berman. Just like quality shit. And then I was like, How you? he's not on, he's like barely on Instagram. He He's not, there's no interviews on him. And he created this shit. And it's so good. The music is on point. I've been listening to Wilco's song, Impossible, Impossible Germany like non fucking stop because the way they use music in each episode I have a, I'll have a link where you can go and it says each song in what section of the show each song that that's how big music is right it's such a huge part so I posted about it and I said you know I uh, Instagram storied it and I said thanks to to Ginger Snappers and in my rib and you know I had the mute that song in the background and then who likes my shit Christopher Starr. And then I was like, oh, well, this is my, this is my time. This is my time to shine. So I was like, I don't want to, I don't want him to be like, oh, what the fuck did I do? Now this crazy bitch is going to be like, just look. So I was like, I kept it short. And I said, I go, oh my God. And I, cause you know how we do TI, if you like something, you nerd out about it. So of course I was like, yeah. who's a music supervisor? Who's the director? Who the, one yeah. of the executive producers is Hito from that uh, directs Atlanta. He's one of the executive producers. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like quality peeps across the board. And uh-huh. it looks great too. And, and you know what me and my friends talked about? It's Chicago. There's people of color. There's a group of people of color here, but it's no big deal. They're just oh, part and they're yeah. well developed. It's just, just like, that's how it should be. That's representation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like they're part of the story because it's fucking Chicago. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they're well developed. They're not surface characters. It's like two white, the, the, the main cast is two white dudes. The rest of people are of color. Mm-hmm. And it's just matter of fact, like, boom, they're here. And I love that. Um, so anyways, I nerded out and I was like, oh shit, he did all this. Plus he music supervised with uh, one of the executive producers. I forget his name, Scott something. So I just, I just hit him like this. I said, wow. I said, you and your co-music supervisor killed the music as well. I said, that Wilco song takes me back. It has been on repeat ever since I finished that episode. The show made me think of Anthony Bourdain, which made me tell my good friends that were featured on his Boyle Heights L.A. episode. They love your show as well. Felicidades. Gracias for giving us quality. Have a great day. Boom. He didn't have to. He didn't have to respond. He didn't ever. He could have hearted it. He didn't have to do that. He responds and he says, wow, that's really kind and great. Yeah, we tried to just jam out with our favorites. So glad you liked it. And thank you for this. And then he started following me. Stop. <laughs> yes. 
It made my wow. day. It made my day. Your week. Your life. Oh my God. I was like, oh, quality motherfucker, right? And yeah, I've been yeah. trying to look for interviews, can't find shit. He's not on Twitter, but this huh. is blowing up. Like everyone is talking about it. My my friend who I had on that's the producer for um uh Summer of Soul, the documentary, the Academy Award yeah. winning documentary. I'm sorry, Academy Award excuse, winning. Excuse, uh-huh. excuse. He tweeted um after he watched episode seven, he said episode seven of the bear masterclass. Okay. And I was like, yes. And so I was talking to him about it. And we were like DMing him about it. And then Anthony Validus from KCRW tweeted about the show. And so him, I don't know him like that. And him and I were talking on DMs talking about like, the music. And he's like, oh, and then he hits me up and tells me how he felt about his episode seven. And so I recommend, I can't recommend this shit enough. It, I've, it's only like eight episodes. And when you finish it, I'm good. Like it could stay there, but if they do a sec, it's open for a season two. And if they do it, I'm there too. Huh? Okay. Wow. I mean, yeah. All right. That's probably the next thing that we'll be watching then. Yeah. I, I, I think I'm hoping that both you and Ranger Ted, I the hope, hope and Ranger Ted will give it the thumbs up so you can see it on the big screen together. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw it on my computer and it was fine. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got it. Um, yeah. So, okay. So stranger things you finished. No. Oh, no, actually today, um, the 5th of July, I, I don't know. I don't know who at my company came up with this, but wherever you are, I'd like to thank you. They gave us today off too. Hell fuck that. I was wondering. Perf. Yeah. That's great. So I'm going to, as soon as we are done with this, I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to pop some popcorn and I'm going to yeah. park my ass on the couch and finish 4.2. That's how you celebrate the 5th of yeah. July. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. so next month, next month's episode, Stranger Things, full yes. blown. Yes. Um, but I finished uh, I finished the first part um, a couple weeks ago and really liked it. Was not sure when it started out. I'm like, I'm one of those people that like did not love season three. Like it was good. Don't get me wrong. Like I watched it like it was my job. And season, <laughs> season two is not as great as season one. Yeah. Um. But I feel like this season is maybe comparable to two. Like I am really enjoying it. And it's it's when it first started off, I was like, Nah, this isn't it. Um. The one thing that um somebody did tell me that I can't unsee, and I'm so sorry that I'm inflicting this on you, <laughs> is um is they were like, I've been watching it and like trying to figure out who Vecna reminds me of. Uh And it's Jim Carrey's The Grinch. (laughs) Uh. And so now I can't unsee that. So you're welcome, everyone. Um, (laughs) But yeah, I'm really excited to finish it up today. Well, I'm excited for you. Text me when you're done and then we'll discuss next week. Um, I'll leave the other shows for 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 next episode, but let's maybe touch upon movies. I see you got some shit here. Yeah, um, I have what I have are two trailers. That's all I got for movies. Um, but those two trailers are um, Meow Wolf that you, you sent me that. I think because it had George R. R. Martin as one as like the benevolent godfather of Meow Wolf, which I never had any idea about. Yeah. And I'm kind of I'm super intrigued by Meow Wolf. So that's something that I just wanted to watch. But I also wanted to call out great trailer. And if you are a person who is either like, oh, yeah, Meow Wolf, they're cool. Or if you're like, what the fuck is a Meow Wolf? Yeah. Then it's like a sort of loose arts collective. And apparently George R. R. Martin is their fairy godfather. Yeah. So you should check that out. We'll have a link to that trailer on the nerd out. And the other one is a trailer that I saw um, for Neptune Frost. And it's sort of from it's the creator is Saul Williams, who's like a poet, um, hip hop artist, interesting, all around interesting dude, activist who ha- I have like sort of appreciated his music for a long time. Um, he did some collaborations with Trent Reznor way back in the day, which is how I learned about him. And I've just always kind of followed his career. And because I'm on his email list, I was like, what is this Neptune Frost thing that he keeps talking about? And if no one here has checked it, checked out 
a trailer for Neptune Frost, do yourself a fucking favor and go check it out. It won like all kinds of awards, people like going bananas about it at all the film festivals recently and things like that. And so that's on my to do list. Yeah, I'm excited to watch Neptune Frost. The The way I know about it, um, I've only met Saul a couple of times in the, since being in the L.A. activist scene, but I've been a fan of him forever. And the reason why I know about Neptune Frost is because I have a friend who um, is super talented and she worked on it somehow. And so she's always pumping it um, and stuff like that. So I was like, oh, shit, this is about to be really good. So I'm excited to see that. Meow yeah. Wolf, I sent to you. As soon as I saw him, I was like, got to send this to T.I. <laughs> but uh, I think Miocito was telling me about someone that worked there. And I was like, what's that? And they told me, I was like, oh, yeah. I go, I think I know what that is. I never knew the actual name, but I remember seeing something that where uh, you go in through the uh, refrigerator. Yes. Uh huh. And um, they started in New Mexico and they have like, I don't know, <laughs> meow wolf land, basically like a meow wolf. Uh, what would you call it? Experience, I guess, in Las Vegas. That's that what I yeah, wanted uh, yeah. to check out too. too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that that's interesting. But when I saw, I had no idea he was part of it. And I was like, Tia, this Me is neither. going straight to her right now. Um <laughs> A movie that I would, I, I'm very interested to see if you've seen it or if you could watch it so we could discuss is Good Luck to You, Leo Grande. Um, that's with Emma Thompson. And she, she, um, she's uh, recently widowed and she gets an escort who, who is Leo. And, and it's, people are calling her brave for being, um, you know, a showing her. A middle-aged woman. Um, yeah, for being a middle-aged woman, being naked and stuff. But oh, um, the naked it, one. Okay. Yeah, but uh -huh. it's sexual. It's 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 a beautiful thing to see because it's about a woman uh, in a certain age talking about her sexual history or lack thereof, and having like a sexual awakening, like just getting into herself, and you know, especially women. Like our age bracket is one thing, but her age bracket, I mean, they grew up in another time where it was yeah, like, nope, yeah. nope. I mean, there's women that out there, uh, her age bracket that have never, never been encouraged to masturbate, look at themselves, feel any way sexual, right? Yeah. And, and maybe have never have a, had never had an orgasm or, you know what I'm saying? It's like, from from your house to your husband's house and like all these different things. And I think it's it's interesting. Like it kept me thinking about a lot of different things. So I'm interested <laughs> to see what you think okay. if you watch it. You know, I think it's I'll great it. that we have some shit like this right now. You know, we yeah. need more shit like this, especially because you know how all the actresses, all the all the uh, the women actors, they say, you know, after a certain age, they're tossed to the side and we're seeing more things that aren't just they're not just playing the mom or the grandma or whatever they're they're playing uh people that contribute still contribute to society <laughs> okay i see it's on hulu yes so let me know if any of you have watched it um i don't know anyone that's watched it. i'm the only one <laughs> in my circle <laughs> and i want to discuss it okay. so let okay. me know i will watch it before we get together next yes that's the homework that's the homework okay i got it stranger things and uh the bear the bear and the leo grande grand yeah. grand grande yeah i forgot how you know she didn't say his last name all the time okay. and then um I will watch uh, Severance. Severance. Yes, you better. I will get on that because I need something of quality, of that level of That'll quality. Yeah. So Severance is next. And then I started Peaky Blinders, but that was the one that I was like, it's stressing me out. I don't need that stress right now. It's always like, yeah. someone's going to get shot. Something's going to happen. <laughs> and I was like, ooh, I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Peaky <laughs> Blinders is like no joke. Yeah. So someone was someone was talking about like some 
some new TV show that just picked back up again and how they were really underwhelmed by the season and how they and like maybe it's also on Netflix. And somebody was saying like, yeah, if only it was like Peaky Blinder style, then like you'd have the first quarter of it would be like, you know, would be what's his name? Chain smoking and um, <laughs> finding out that Tommy chain smoking and like finding out about something going wrong. And then like the next quarter of it will be a slow mo of him walking to some like cool <laughs> song to go fuck somebody up but look you're fine doing it look you're fine <laughs> the next quarter is like and they were like broke it down and i was like yeah it's pretty much every peaky blinders episode but yeah. i'm here for it i'm here for it in spurts i was like oh i can't do this deep dive right now i'm too stressed um yeah. so yeah so let us know what you guys are watching what you're nerding out to um you know are you coming to bogota colombia what, what's the word uh are, are you nerding out about some procreate brushes what's the word <laughs> but but more most importantly if there's only one thing you take away from this episode what are you doing for voting rights what are you doing for fucking our our women lady parts rights <laughs> yeah what are you doing to subvert the fucking patriarchy exactly all the time never ending let yeah, us know let us know yeah anything else right. ti for this one no i'm good i drink i got some popcorn to pop and some stranger things to watch. i'm so excited for you okay peace out nerds <laughs>